like I could learn to do most jobs, but I understand the reality of the job market is you have to come in saying, I already know how to do this. No one's gonna give you six months to figure out how to do a job. I was laid off. And for the first time, the relevance of not having a degree became manifest because even though I had years upon years, over 20 years of experience doing all these different things, the first question they were asking is, so where'd you go to school? The last time I actually had to go looking for a job, we did things like talk to people face to face and that's completely gone now. And you just end up getting put into a slot and as a result, they don't know who you are, they just look at, has he gone to school? No, so then you go into that pile. Because you don't learn how to finance when you're poor, you're poor. So you don't learn how to look, you almost ignore your finances. And I had to learn to look at them to be able to manage them. But that's a huge, overwhelming gap. But I knew that in order to make a livable wage, uh, at the time I think they were paying me like a little over uh, minimum wage, which you, know, you can't live on if you wanted to. I needed to put something in front of my name or behind my name to one, separate myself from being a criminal and also to make me legitimate in some ways. Generally my routine was I didn't have a car at the time, I was riding a bicycle and I would put my children on the school bus for school and ride my bike and clean houses for the doctors and the dentists down in, you know, in the high-end neighborhoods and then ride my bike up to school and I'd, you know, audio tape my classes and ride home and meet the kids and then let them play and cook dinner and do all those preparatory things that you do with children. And after they're bathed and they're sitting there, you know, watching TV or relaxing before bed, I'd put my headsets, listen to my lecture again, and I'd be sewing wedding dresses um, at this long table that I had, and I would just be sewing dresses and listening to the lecture. On the weekends, I was driving a taxi. I mean, when I went to orientation, it was crazy. It was overwhelming. I saw all these young people, like, sitting next to me, and I was like, I do not belong here. Like, what am I doing? You know, these are kids that are coming out of high school and I am i can be their mother. That's what I'm going to be in the classroom and I really don't want to be that. Plus, I have experience, you know? I have experience. I don't have a paper that can show that I have knowledge. I can say yes or no. You know, have you ever been convicted? That question on the application, the box, that right? the box, right? Yeah. So that question comes up, so I'm just like, how am I supposed to succeed? Like, and everything keeps you stuck. Like, you can only do so much. They want me to work doing construction, like mindless work, but that's not me. I'm not, I can work with my hands, but my mind is not being, it's not being fed. My mind needs to be fed for me to feel like I'm encouraged, like I'm involved in something. People are working hard. People are working so hard, and people don't have opportunities that other people have. And um, it doesn't mean they're not smart. It felt like punishment um, just to try to get ahead. I have this go, go, get it spirit, but I was never in a position or given that support of hope to keep going forward, you know what I mean? And, and I knew that's where I wanted to go, was forward. You know, the Greek word to incite means to put a flame underneath. And I want to incite some learning as well as some dreaming.